Hi, my name is Thaddeus Aid. I'm a member of the Department of Statistics and the IT Learning Program at the University of Oxford. Um, this is the second video in this series of Introduction to Python. Um, the first one is in the um, comments below, and I'll put a um, tag up here so that you can uh, link to it. Um, and the purpose of this um, video is to give my students that take my online course um, some additional instruction to help them along and to help anyone else um, get a feel for Python and start programming. Alright, so programming is about building things into steps and what these steps are called is an algorithm. An algorithm is, is just a way of breaking problems up into smaller parts that are easier to solve. So it will allow us to build us a step-by-step -step solution to a problem uh, and each of these steps um, is where we, deal, we drill down into the details and the actual methods of how we need to make things happen. And as I said, uh, programs are just algorithms that a computer can understand. Um, so one of the things that um, you really need to focus on is figuring out how to make big problems into small manageable steps that a computer can understand. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about are, are bugs. Um, so bugs are problems with your code, and um, basically they can be uh, syntax errors where um, you've written the code wrong, they can be runtime errors where something has gone wrong during the execution, or it could be a semantic error where it's neither a problem with the code or a problem really with the runtime, but a problem with the algorithm where you don't get the expected result. Um, so these are the things that you sort of need to think about as you're building and you're developing your programs. Um, debugging, of course, is the process of removing bugs, um, and so I like to think of it as as a puzzle. So I build something, and there's something wrong with it, and then I've got I've got a puzzle that I need to solve, and we'll get a multitude of clues um, from the interpreter itself, from the behavior of the program, um, and these are bits of information that you've got to take in, and you've got to start learning how to. Um, take this information and figure out how to solve the problem and fix it. So our first program is the classic hello world. Um, it uses a something called a function, um, which is a repeatable bit of code um, that you can then just use. And what we want to do is we want to just print hello world to the screen. So we'll open up our idle um, GUI. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to say print hello world and spin it out. And so the the interpreter takes this um, this instruction and it compiles it into uh, machine language um, that then allows the the computer to know what to do. And what it does is it takes this this um, error, these characters between the two quotes um, and spits it back to the screen. So it says hello world here. Now, we can put anything that we want between these two quotes, except for other quotes. Um, and so, when we're building strings, which is what these are called, we can have, um, we can use double quotes like this. Um, we can use single quotes. Um, or if we want to be um, extra careful, uh, because we're going to want to use quotes inside of it, we can do triple quotes. So if we put something inside of this, we can say um, and that's going to allow us to have our, our um, use of the quotes inside. We can also do this with the, the single quote as well. Which again, um, which again allows us to use um, single and double quotes in, within within the string without having to escape it. If we want to use single quotes or double quotes um, by itself, we can say and what happens here is these backslashes are what what are called escape characters, and the escape character changes 
the meaning of the character immediately following it. So in this case, um, the escape character says, I, I want you to treat the next um, double quote as a character and not a command um, so that it won't think that I've ended the string. Um, so you can either do the triple quote or you can use escape methods um, depending on your personal preference or what the, um, the group that you're working with prefers. So, in the last video, I, I talked about lower-level languages, um, and those are generally called the assembly languages. Um, and this is the same pro the same program as print hello world, except for in the lower um, the lower language. And as you can see, this is much more complex. Um, you you have to actually get in there, and you have to use the direct commands of the processor to make it understand what you're doing and to get it to what you want to do. So this is exactly why um, computer scientists have built high-level languages, because this is really easy to get wrong. You'll take days and weeks to find bugs, um, and it, it's not very understandable. As opposed to this, which is perfectly understandable, I want to print something at the screen, this is what I want to print. Okay, so one of the things that you need to do as a programmer is you need to be able to communicate with other people um, that are going to read your code, most importantly the future you. Um, every programmer has the story of some bit of code that they didn't comment and they came back six months later and they had no idea what was coming on. Um, so programs themselves are written in, in formal language um, as opposed to natural language. It's alive, um, but it was a moth. Um, when, uh, okay, so um, programs are written in a very formal language, and they're, they're written um, in a way that we can communicate with the computer, which isn't the way that we communicate with each other. Um, so we need to leave natural language comments about what we're trying to do um, for your future self or anyone else that may use the code. So what we do here is that when we're using a script file, uh, we can say we use the, uh, the hash key um, which tells the interpreter that um, anything be beyond this symbol to ignore. This is uh, information for the programmers. Um, so we can say this, this is uh, Thad's Hello World program. Then we can just say print hello. Uh, need to save this. And then we can just run it. Um, you can either use the run command or you can hit F5. And as you can see over here, it's taken the commands in the script file and put it to the screen. All right. Um, so data types. Um, I mean, what, what does a computer understand? A computer doesn't actually stand, understand very much except for numbers. And even then, we have to tell it how to interpret those numbers. So the two big ones that we're going to be using through this course are int, which is an integer. It's, it's a whole number, um, either negative number or positive number. So 1, negative 5, or 2, 0. And a float is a real number. So th these are the decimal numbers like 1.1, 5.5, 10.0, negative 48.9. Um, and one thing that you have to understand about using floats is that the computer has to estimate what you want with floats. So there's always a small margin for error when, when using floats, so that's just something to keep in mind when, when you're dealing with floats. Um, strings is the other big one that we're going to be dealing with, um, which is a collection of characters. Um, a, it's a special format for a, um, a collection of characters that doesn't actually mean much to the computer, um, but it has meaning to the user of the program. Um, there are other data types, which are longs, which are large ints. There are doubles, which are large floats. And there's um, characters, which are the single letters within, within a string. Um, but we won't cover those much in this course, but they're good to know that they're there. <coughs> so what we've seen so far is um, things like... Um, 7 plus 3, that'll give you 10, or 
print hi or these sorts of things, which are, are direct commands that are processed at the time of um, execution. However, if we want to if we want to save something, if if we want to have something that stays in memory that we can then um, reuse a, a, a meaningful identifier for, uh, we can use uh, variables. Um, so a variable can hold any of the data types that we we just um, spoke about, and it can be changed as needed. Um, uh, it can be the result of some other computation, and it can be the result of um, some other variable that you've done something to, but don't want to change the original variable. Um, so this is like, we take a name, also try and make your variable names meaningful. Um, I mean, I, I could just say x equals 7, but if I come back to it, I don't actually know what x means. But if I say I've, I've got a number that I want to hold, and I want it to be 7, then we can do that. If I want to change the number, I can do that. I can change that to 10, or I can um, reference the variable itself and change, I can update it to a new value, so num will now equal 11. So each one, each time I, I have that equal sign, what I'm doing is I'm saying I want, I want this variable num to be assigned the value that follows the equal sign. Um, we could even put a string in here if we wanted to, um, and we'll see that it, it now holds the string. But one of the things that, that you have to understand is that the computer doesn't actually really care what the variable name is. The variable name is only meaningful to the, to the programmer. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons why you want to make it meaningful. So it's like if, if, I, um, if I make something called pi um, and stick something in that, um, then pi is going to be whatever I want it, I, I've assigned it to. The computer won't know that I want 3.14, 159, etc. Um, so the, I, I just want to stress that, that the name of the variable is not meaningful to the computer. It is only meaningful to, to the, the programmer. So use something that makes sense to you. Um, so if, if we're in, in doubt of what type of variable we're, we're currently dealing with, um, we can use the type function. So if we say type num, it's going to tell us we've got a, a string. Um, and this, this again comes back to the idea that the computer doesn't actually know what the hell we're talking about. Um, it just interprets our commands and, and tries to do the best that it can. So even though I've got it named num, it's holding a string. So this is something that you've got to keep in mind while you're building your programs that you can assign you can assign any variable that, or you can assign any data type that you want into a variable, um, even if that um, variable name is counter to what it actually is. So if we do a type of pi, um, it's going to give us a class int. If we change pi to what we actually think it should be, um, and do a type we'll get a class float. So again, this ties back to the data types that I was talking about. So we've got the, the string class, we've got the, we've got the string data type, we've got the int data type, and we've got the float data type. Um, we can change these if we want to. So if I, if I was say int pi, um, this is what's called a typecast, and I think I'm on the next slide. Um, but let me just switch over to that. So type conversions. Um, so if, if we need to change the type that a variable is, we can tell it to um, do that on the fly. Um, so these are some examples, and, and what I want to um, kind of show you is, so if I print cast a string um, of numbers, then the compiler can go in and it can translate those that string that is a number into a number if we want it to. We can do this with um, sorry. So it, it, it's taken the the information from um, the string and it's turned it into a 
uh, variables. So if I wanted to um, take pi and I wanted to turn it into an int, it would drop it down to three. Because what it does is it just takes everything um, behind the decimal point and gets rid of it. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't round. So any rounding that you want to do, you have to do manually. Um, and it, it just takes takes every number in front of the decimal point and, and gives you that number. Um, one of the other things that we kind of want to um, be aware of is how negative numbers work, um, because it always goes to the it always just cuts everything at the decimal point and gets rid of it. So positive numbers go towards zero, negative numbers also go towards zero. Um, yes. <clears throat> so a statement is, in the simplest way to describe it, a instruction for the computer. We've already seen the print hello world where we've just told the computer that we want it to use the, the print function to print the words hello world to the screen. Um, we've also seen the assignment statement, which um, we've said, I've got some variable identifier, and I want it to hold this information. An expression is um, part of a statement. Um, so we have expressions that um, need to be evaluated. Um, so what we can do here is um, we, can, uh, we can take num, set it back to a number. And then we can say num equals 40 plus 50. And what it's going to do here is it's going to um, take everything past the assignment operator, and it's going to evaluate what you want to have done, and then it's going to assign it to, to num. So num is going to equal 90. Uh, we can, as I said, access the variable itself and change it. Let's get rid of 10, so we want num to be 80. But what we can also do is we can take other variables um, and say num2 equals num divided by 2. And, and what happens here is num has stayed the same. See, num is still 80. But we've got a new variable that has taken that information and divided by 2. Um, division always gives you a float because um, that's just the way it works. If you want to force a, if you want to force um, it to have a uh, integer at the end, um, what we do is we divide. We do the the double um, slash for integer division. Um, so num two is now going to be an integer. Um, so that's just something to to keep in mind. Uh, So mathematical operators are the standard um, arithmetic operators. Um, you've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, one thing you really have to be careful of is divide by zero errors. Um, that will crash your program. So whenever you do division, always make sure that your um, div uh, divisor is not equal to zero. Um, as I showed you, we can do integer, integer division. Um, we can also do exponents. Um, which are always fun. So if we, if we want um, if we want to do an exponent, it's just um, the double asterisk, um, and that will give us that. Um, but the other thing to notice is that we can we can um, do an exponent to an exponent, and exponent is right associative. So what it's going to do first is it's going to take two to the power of four. And then it's going to take 5 to the power of 16, which is a big number. <coughs> um, we can also use parentheses. So that is functionally equivalent of this. Gives us the same result. However, if I want to change the order of precedence, um, like this, we're going to get 25 to the power of 4, which gives us an entirely different number. Um, it follows the, the standard orders of precedence for um, algebra, which I thought I had written down. There we go. 
Um, yeah, so the order of operations um, goes parenthesis, exponent, um, multiplication, division, modulo. Those all go from left to right. Um, and addition and subtraction last, which goes, um, again, left to right. So input. Um, obviously, we're going to need to get information from our users um, to be able to do some sort of processing on it. Um, and what we can use is we can use the, the input function. Um, so if we do name equals input, and here we, if we want to um, ask a question or give an instruction before we um, get our, our information, then we can put it into a string here. So what's your name? My name is Thad. And here's the thing that I, that I want to point out at the moment is that this comes immediately after the, the colon here. So what we want to do instead, if we want to leave some, some space, is that we actually have to um, do that manually ourselves um, and add a space there. So now it comes in and, um, so used to pointing. Now it comes in and we've got a space before we give it our, our input. So now we do that and name contains the string that. <coughs> so one thing that you have to know about input is that all user input is a string. So if I do um, name equals input and I put in a number and we do type name, we've got a string there. So one, once you've got your input, you have to convert it from string to any other data type that, that you want to do. Um, so if we wanted to turn that into an int, <coughs> we just use a type conversion. OK. so. We've, we've discussed uh, reassignment and update um, because I forgot the slide was here. Um, so you can, you can assign a, a value to a variable, you can reassign a new value to the variable, or you can update um, your variable with, with new information. Excuse me, I don't want to get into a coughing fit. Um, so debugging. So what I like to do is I like to start small. I like to get a very small part of my program working and, and working correctly, and then I add on to it. So you add small incremental improvements to um, that work to get it up to the, the point that, that it does everything you want it to do. Um, take some time to learn about error messages. Um, Google is your best friend. Stack Exchange is your second best friend. Um, Stack Exchange is a website where people go to exchange help and advice on how to build programs. Um, they're very, um, pretty much any question you have as, as, as a learner has probably already been asked and answered on, on that site. Another thing that you can do is you can use print statements to check the, um, you can use print statements to check the current state of your program. So you can say, um, I want to make sure that a variable is of, of a particular type, so I, I can print the type <coughs> to make sure that everything is working correctly. Again, excuse me. Um, so that is the summary of the first three chapters of the book. Um, Oxford students, please read and do the um, examples in the um, first three chapters of the book. Everybody else, take your time. Um, but do, do read through it. It's got a lot of great information. It's a really good book. Um, and Oxford students, um, your task for the week is to give me a, a, um, an algorithm, um, not in computer code, but just written um, in a natural language that will allow me to cook your favorite meal. So what I want is I want a recipe that contains all the information I will ever need um, in order to cook your favorite meal. I need to know what the ingredients are, I need to know how much of each ingredient I need for how many people, and I need a step-by-step -step instruction 
of um, what I need to do to, to produce it. Um, obviously I have basic cooking skills, I know how to chop things, you can just say chop into uh, one centimeter cubes or, or whatever it happens to be, but your, your description has to be correct. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, please like and share and subscribe if you want to get uh, more updates on this. Um, and again, I'd like to thank uh, ITLP for supporting me in producing this. Um, yeah, thanks. I'll see you next time.